Hello there and you're very welcome to the Glenegal Hotel Killarney for the second launch of our DVD, Secrets of Kerry, a Captain Story. It's going to make a fabulous night. We have a huge amount of people here, relatives of deceased captains and some of the captains themselves. And as you can see just behind me here, a fabulous array of, uh, of uh, pictures uh, of the captains and a little story about their lives. They'd be presented to each and every one of them. Uh, last Friday night we were down in Cartine's pub in Kells and that was a fabulous occasion. Huge crowd, a great turnout there. So you enjoy this uh, Secrets of Kerry, a captain's story, the second lunch. Can I say a very warm welcome to everybody to what we expect is a very historic occasion. On behalf of Christy Reardon, who's the man behind this nearly three-year project, and myself, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for coming out. This uh, CD is the nearest thing I've seen to a uh, uh, history of Kerry GA. Nobody has ever taken on the real job of writing a history. I suppose it's because we have been there so long and we've been so successful. I want to sincerely congratulate the two men, uh, and Joanne, of course, Christy and uh, Wishy, on a fabulous job. It, 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 it's uh, riveting stuff. Uh, it uh, brings back memories of what we've heard and read about. And uh, it, is, um, it was a huge challenge, and sure, uh, anything worth doing is a huge challenge. I'm privileged and honored to be in such company tonight. We are in great company, and we have added to that tonight to this great company we have with us by adding this excellent, absolutely enthralling DVD. It is very right that people should be remembered. We are very good at it in the GA, but we are also very lax in recording and putting things in paper. And this DVD will put a lot of that very, very, very right. I know that we were enthralled looking at it tonight, how must the families feel when they'll see it and watch it over and over again. I want to congratulate you, Christy and Wishy, on a marvellous production, a one that will stand the testament of time. And on behalf of everybody, congratulations on a job well done. Go to meet them You're very welcome to the launch of Secrets of Carry. I'm delighted that the snow has held off for us this time, and I'd like to apologize that we had to postpone two weeks ago. Dr. Segalia, on this on of his own book. And this is, I think, a very rare production, probably once a century, that we'll have a production like this dealing with Carrie anyhow. Few of us will be alive for the next one. Um, the amount of work and everything else, when it, I, I'm astonished that they could get it on that much time. The commitment, the resilience, they kept going. When I think we should mention it to me maybe a year or two ago, and you say, this will be 10, 15 years, or maybe the Kathleen Mavonian style, it will never be done. But here it is before us. I congratulate and thank both of you for your great efforts. And modern uh, Schriefter, Mari on It's fitting, I think, very fitting that it's the Dublin Men's Carry People's Association should be hosting this. The main thing I would say about the particular CD is it will stand the test of time. This is not something that, you know, Christmas will come and Christmas will go and, uh, you know, it has to be bought for Christmas or anything like that. This is something that you might pick up and leave through maybe, you know, six months, a year's time or two years' time. Uh, it reminded me, I suppose, when I looked at the CD, of, uh, it was akin to, I suppose, the closest way I could describe it was growing up as a boy, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, and travelling with my father into Valencia Island, uh, into Mick O'Connell's household, where Ned and Mick were great friends. And uh, I remember in Mikko's mother's house, uh, there was a box or what they call a rack, I suppose, with one of the old suitcases in it that the mother kept all his clippings. I can assure you, Mikko wasn't keeping any of his own clippings. <laughs> But um, I remember as a young child um, being completely mesmerised uh, by this box in the corner and I used to slip my way into the corner and I'd pull out all these reports of the games down through the 50s and 60s and uh, I suppose I was enthralled by it and, and uh, it was something that had a huge influence on me. But uh, this is the first time I suppose since and in a modern era that I can see something akin to that. I picked it up last week and turned it on for a few minutes and it just brought back the memories you know, of that period of time for me personally. But it is something that all of us, I suppose, are lovers, I suppose, of the green and gold and uh, of Kerry football. Um, I must say that 
the only you mightn't admit it, but you are a special elite group of men that are uh, growing up with the we, you know, as a young boy, I suppose, in Carsevine and in Kerry, uh, the dream was to wear the green and gold, and the ultimate would have been to captain Kerry uh, and success and, and bring home the Sam Maguire. And I suppose, uh, you know, you are a special group of people that we are in awe of, that we do look up to. And throughout this CD, and I suppose hopefully and throughout, and it is the case, is that the shining light that comes true for me is that the humility of all of the Kerry captains. Um, this is not uh, a bragging uh, of, uh, of successes and the number of Irelanders that have been won by Kerry. This is a statement by their families, by themselves and by their people and by their communities. In 1903, Kerry won its first All-Ireland Senior Football title and over a century later, Darren O'Sullivan captained the Kingdom to its 36th title. Now, Kerry radio broadcaster Weeshi Fogarty has documented the triumphs and near misses of Kerry's journey, Kenny's, Kerry's numerous journeys to Crow Park, <laughs> not just one. Joining us, to discuss, it. <laughs> joining us to discuss the passion, the raw emotion and the enormous part that Sam has played in the lives of the people connected to the various Kerry teams is Weeshi Fogarty and the youngest winning captain, Darren Sullivan. But first, let's take a look at what the oldest living captain, Gus Cremens, had to say in the documentary. He didn't want me on the team. And he make out that only for Joe Barrett, we wouldn't have won that hard island. Because Joe Barrett insisted that they be on the team. He made a show because I wasn't done it. And at least six times he had me shoved into the field before I was eventually put on. Yes, yes. And uh, I got the winning point. Exciting run high as the crowd surges on the field. You didn't go up to receive the cup of Paddy Kennedy. I, I was taking shoulder higher around the field. Right. I, 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 I didn't see the cup, the, the cup being presented at all at all. Right. Were you disappointed, Gus, after not re receiving I, the cup? I, I came home with you before the, the team. Good morning, Good morning. gentlemen. Good morning. Nice to see you again, and Darren, nice to meet you for the first time. Uh, Mr. Fogarty, um, a labour of love, I think it's safe to say, and one that's probably taking you, what, four years to put together? Well, the, the guts of three years, Mark, I can tell you, with uh, Christy Reardon, who is the producer and the editor of the whole thing, obviously our videos, Castlevine, we set out on it uh, about years ago to do it and it, it took longer than what we expected naturally enough because as we progressed and we started interviewing all the captains it developed into history of Kerry football really and the further we went and the more stories we uncovered it was absolutely fascinating and as you said it took about the guts of three years and uh, see our videos in Casavine did a tremendous job with it and we believe ourselves we believe that uh, it's one of the best products of his kind that has come out about the G. it's a well, four-hour DVD. But just, just looking at Gus there yeah. you could see like it was 1946 but his face is completely alive and animated and the excitement he still feels now recounting that day. That's right, Jeanette. Actually, that was a very sad part of the whole thing because he's, he'd be 90 years old now in January and uh, he still regrets the way that he was dropped for the replay in 1946. And there was a lovely touch at the lunch in Killarney lately when Darren was the youngest Kerry captain ever, met the oldest captain who'd be, who'd be uh, Gus, but he's not the oldest winning captain. The oldest winning captain then is Jazz Murphy. Darren also met him. So there was lovely touches in the whole thing being brought together. So we believe ourselves that the, doc the, the documentary, uh, as I said, is the four hours, it has documented really Kerry football in, in itself. So to win it then, Darren, was that something you've been dreaming of since you were wee high like was, was it really that day when he, when you were stood up there you took sam was that the day that you were like this is it this is the day i want to remember forever for all eternity yeah it was it obviously it was obviously great like but it, you know it's not something you dream of because being from a small club like glenbait you know you don't actually you'd be dreaming of playing from but getting the opportunity to captain him was not wasn't something that i actually expected to happen so obviously it was something special but at 22 years of age, i didn't want it to be the pinnacle like so Hopefully the better days ahead. Mm. You would think that everybody in Kerry <laughs> will buy this for Christmas and nobody else outside the county will, but I suspect it'll be a big seller. And it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful piece of history and archive and, and kept there. And by the way, while we're at it, congratulations on your UI award. Thank this you very much. It's an award-winning radio broadcaster. Well, Darren, uh, Darren I, I, I want you. to wish you success, but it'll be at Cork's expense, so... <laughs> A 
Captain's Story, Secrets of Kerry, an amazing new DVD, really perhaps a work of historical significance in many respects, has just been released. And we have one of the men behind it with us, PPI Sports Broadcaster of the Year, Wishy Fogarty. We also have two genuine legends of the game, Antonio Sullivan, captain of the 1970 Kerry team, and Morris Fitzgerald, who features in a special extra interview on the DVD. Wishy, first off, really... What an amazing achievement, to be honest, to interview and to do a feature on the captains who have ever led Kerry to greatness. Where did the idea come from and just how much work went into it? Well, Jorah, as you said it there, now when you look back at it now, it was done and dusted. It was an amazing feat, really, and it was very humbling for us involved. But the main man behind it was a man by the name of Christy Reardon from Castleveen and down in South Kerry. He, is, he owns his own uh, a company down there, CR Videos. And he came to me nearly three years ago now, and he said he had this idea in his head for many years of, of doing this, of interviewing every living, winning Kerry captain. And he said to me, would you mind coming on board and giving a hand? So... I said I did, thinking it wouldn't uh, develop what it did, but three, nearly three years after then, uh, we, when you look back at it and we discovered uh, what we had done, so it meant really, Joel, it meant interviewing every single living, winning captain, and then what we set out to do, we set out to interview the nearest relative of every dead captain, and to nearly 100% we achieved that. And... Uh, and there's some fascinating stories in it, and it's absolutely unbelievable when you look at it. But the end result is that the editing that Christy Reardon did it, did it and the work that he put into it, uh, that really made it it is. Because we believe this is the best, greatest GA DVD that was ever produced in this country. Morris Fitzgerald, like, for you, obviously, growing up in Kerry, you know, I mean, you grew up in the presence of, of legends. To kind of see it finally encapsulated together on a couple of DVDs, I don't know if the rest of the country might finally begin to get a sense of what it means to be part of that whole Kerry tradition. Yeah, Joe, but of course, it, it, I suppose the name is The Secret of Kerry Captains. I wonder if anybody will find any secrets. There too many Kerry men give away too many great secrets as to how to win all Ireland's. Uh, for me, um, growing up as a, as a young child, I suppose, in Kerry, the closest way I could describe this uh, video, what it would mean in, in terms of how it was growing up as a boy, was as a young child going to Mick O'Connell's house, being brought there and um, leafing through some of the old magazines and clippings in a box and, uh, I suppose, marvelling and getting lost completely in and that and being completely captivated by that and I suppose this is akin to that now as a modern piece uh, you turn on your video and you know you just get lost in it and I, I think it's a piece of work that will stand the test of time it is being launched now for Christmas by Christy Reardon and Wishy but I think it is a piece that you would be able to revisit and uh, it is something that will stand a testament I mean I'm sitting here next to Donny Sullivan won his first All-Ireland, or not his first, but Captain Kerry, to, uh, I suppose I was just born, and uh, here I am sitting next to him, and he's one of the icons and legends of the game down in Kerry, and, you know, it's a phenomenal thing to to, to gather all of this information, and uh, it's it's something that needed to be done, I think. I think it was a fantastic initiative by Christy Reardon. <laughs> Morris, there, there is this real sense, though, that everybody just decided that this was going to be a, such an important project that the thing to do was to be completely open and honest, and there was no holding back, no sense that this is and it was a drag or it was difficult or it's just it is so gentle and so easy and as a result of that everybody seems to tell their truth yeah, well, I think that's, in fairness, is a fantastic tribute to, to Wishy and Christy. And in fairness, it's worth mentioning John Sullivan as well, uh, who I think he carried out one of the interviews there with Mick O'Doyle. Is that Christy's right? Christy's son, Tony. Is that right? And Christy's yeah. son, yeah, Tony. And I think that's a fantastic credit to them because you only have to be in their company, uh, believe you me, for a few minutes to know that uh, it has a nice, easy flow.